burden and the interpretation thereof true. Amen. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odor unto him. Let us pray. Father God, we give you praise and we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you reveal things unto your prophets and unto your children. We thank you, Lord, that you are an everlasting God, a God of mercy and of love. And we stand before you today, dear God, in humbleness, giving you thanks, dear Lord, because, because you have saved us. You have called us out of darkness and brought us unto this marvelous light. We thank you, Lord, that we are that bride whom your servant Solomon saw. As she was dressed. And all the daughters and all the concubines adored her. As your servant said, who is this that cometh in the strength of an army? In order and in beauty. Your church, your God, we thank you. We thank you that we are your church. And we ask you, Lord, to give us strength and to open the eyes of our understanding that we may behold your glory and continue our walk with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, give thanks to the Lord. The word that I spoke, that I read this morning are prophetic words. Many books Many sermons have been preached on the teachings of Daniel. Daniel himself said that they were not for him, but for they were for a time that he himself did not understand. The prophets of old, they wrote about you and I. They wrote about the cross. They saw the Lamb of God. But they cannot, they could not perceive it, they could not understand it. They could not, not see or understand, they could see but they could not understand what was to take place. We, we read in the book of Isaiah that Isaiah uh, uh, spoke about uh, Jesus Christ being whipped being chastised in the 53rd chapter of this book. He is called a messianic prophet. Yet these men did not understand what they wrote. But how faithful they were. How faithful these men who had not the Holy Ghost as you and I have. Praise the Lord. Yet, they continued firm and steadfast in the faith. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and Daniel interpreted that dream. He saw the fine elements that we consider as riches and power. Gold, silver, brass. All of these are powers and kingdoms. We know that one of the, the first kingdom, the first power was the Babylonian kingdom under Nebuchadnezzar. We know that in one night the Medes and the Persians took power from, from Babylon. And by the way, we're over there where Babylon is and we're at war right now in Iraq. And then after the Medes and the Persians came the Greeks. That young man, Alexander the Great, who, who cried because there were no more worlds to conquer. And then we had Rome, a powerful, a powerful kingdom. But out of these 
four powerful kingdoms, Daniel in his in his dream, I mean uh, Nebuchadnezzar in his dream, he saw a stone cut out of a mountain without hands. Hallelujah. That stone come rolling down and it began to destroy that great image that, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had dreamed about. The powers of this world were going to be destroyed by a stone. A stone is something smaller than a rock. Praise the Lord. Isaiah said, you shall see him. But he has no comeliness in him. He would not desire to see him because there's nothing great about him. But he is that stone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is that stone. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ, hallelujah, not only is a stone, but he's a rock. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. The Roman Catholic Church said that, that Peter was the rock of the Roman Catholic Church because Jesus said, upon this rock, but it is not so. The conviction of Peter is what Jesus was going to build his, his church upon. And, and when you confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, you are confessing a rock. Praise the Lord. Something that is unmovable. Something that you cannot break. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus was born of a virgin. We all know the Christmas story. We all know the Easter story. Praise the Lord. But Christmas and Easter means nothing unless you are saved. Christmas and Easter means nothing unless you accepted Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. For this babe was born in a manger. At the age of 33, he was crucified. But on the third day, he rose from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He showed himself to his disciples. Amen. He showed them the wounds. He showed them the, the scars that he had. And then he had before he ascended into heaven, he told just a few. He didn't tell the multitude. He told a few. Terry in Jerusalem. Terry means stay. I was in a swimming pool yesterday, throwing my legs off. <laughs> I was in the pool yesterday and this young man said, uh, I told him, yeah, that's a nice looking dog you have. Yeah, he's a, he's a mother, I got him from the SPCA. And uh, I think he's deaf. I tell him to stay, he comes. <laughs> tell him to sit, he stands. I go, what's the dog's name? Oh, it's Destiny. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. Come on. Come on, right talk to you. But we tell animals to stay and they stay. And Jesus told his disciples, stay. Stay in Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem until you are empowered by the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 